Hi, this is Bruce the Accounting Guy again, and what we're going over now is in Chapter 3, and we're going to take it from where there's a trial balance. Now, I have a trial balance listed up here on the board as of October 31st, 2008. And what you need to understand is, is, is that these numbers were pulled directly, of course, from our general ledger. You should really already know that. It's the end of the month. We pulled all these numbers from the general ledger taking the final balance in each account, and we total them out, of course, our debits and our credits should be equal. Now, <clears throat> what we're covering actually today are adjusting entries, and not all of these balances are truly perfect in this trial balance. These were just all created from transactions. As we paid for things, we debited and credited the appropriate accounts that accumulated their totals. Um, the first item that I want to talk about is the advertising supplies of $2,500 here. As we purchased our supplies, we would take them and credit out cash and debit the, the advertising supplies. And let's say we would take them and just put them in a closet in the back of, of, our, uh, of a room in, in, you know, where our business is. If we didn't use any and we went back there to count them, of course, now we'd have $2,500 worth of supplies. So if we looked at the general ledger account, which I've set up a T account here for advertising supplies, we would see then at the end that it does have at, this, at the end of the month right now $2,500 worth of supplies in it. And what we do is we send back one of our employees and we say, listen, go to the back room and count up how much of the supplies are left. And I would not expect $2,500 of supplies to be in there because we've used them throughout the month. Now, conceptually, what we really should have done is every time somebody went back there and took out some supplies, we should have made an entry to remove them from the supplies account. But that could be very cumbersome and not really cost effective. So we wait till the end of the month. We go back to the supplies. We count them up. And when we count them up, there's only $1,000 left of supplies. So if there's only $1,000 left of actual supplies, what's that tell us? You got it. It tells us that we used the, the remainder, which would be the difference of $1,500. So we need to take $1,500 worth of supplies out of here and, of course, record them as an expense. And so therefore, on October 31st, below we have the following entry that would go in our general journal. We put the date. We're going to record advertising supplies expense. Therefore, it goes next to the margin. It's the debit. There's the $1,500. And of course, we're going to credit this account advertising supplies for the $1,500. Okay? Once we've done that entry, of course, the debit's first next to the margin, $1,500. We indent and put the, put the credit advertising supplies and we put a there's our uh, explanation. Notice here's the same account here, back down here. We start off with $2,500. Here's the adjustment of $1,500 to it. And of course, the ending balance would be $1,000. And now we have the $1,000 correct balance in advertising supplies. And then, of course, here's the T account, which represents the general ledger account for advertising supplies. And you see we have $1,500 into it. So really, this advertising supplies account, as we purchase them, we debit them again into this account. And it's a holding tank. It amasses all the supplies we've purchased and that have gone into that closet in the back. And then at the end, we just count them. Whatever we have left, we know we haven't used. And the difference is what we used. And as we did here, we record it as an expense. That's one of the adjusting entries that we will have on a continuous basis in accounting. When I go back up to the trial balance then, you're going to learn that there are certain accounts that just are continuously um, adjusted at the end of every month. The next account that we would also have would be any prepaids. Because as I told you in the last chapter, prepaids also must be adjusted as they're used. In this case, we can see we have $600 worth of prepaid. So we drop down to the prepaid insurance T account, and in that general ledger account, we'd have 600 bucks. And this is the month of October we paid it. And we need a little bit more facts about that prepaid insurance. And they are that it was paid for a one-year cycle, and that that prepaid insurance of $600 really covered October 31st through September 30th. And we're now working as the as our um, trial balance says, October 31st, which means one month has gone by out of this cycle. So we can't keep the whole $600 in here. This is like a holding tank. As we use it, we need to credit it out and record it as what? An insurance expense. If this was prepaid rent, it would be rent 
expense we'd be recording. All right, if it was prepaid taxes, it would be tax expense. So in this case, it's insurance. We'll record it as insurance expense. We'll yank it out. We'll pull it out based over the amount of coverage it has. We said it was for a 12-month period, so therefore we divide this number by 12. It comes out to $50, and we'll yank out, we'll credit out $50 for every month we used it. Well, this was one month, so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll record it out. Here it is, October 31st. There's the credit, the prepaid insurance of $50. That will go in here to reduce it, and notice the debit right next to the margin, which is listed first as insurance expense, and there's the debit. So as we use it up, we record the expense, we remove it from the insurance. Again, here is showing the 600 at the beginning. We just credited it out 50. Now it has a balance of 550, which does make sense. That 550 represents $50 at 11 months. And of course, into the insurance account, we now have the proper expense of 50 bucks. Okay, so that is another account that we use that has to be adjusted at the end of every month. So that's two of the accounts that will always have to be adjusted. Another account we have to adjust is equipment. Now, equipment's a little bit different in that we will not adjust it directly. But understand that any kind of buildings, equipment, vehicles, anything along that, uh, that you have, when we purchased them, we did not record them as an expense, but rather we recorded them as an asset because they add value. However, as we, we still use these items, they tend to deteriorate, and we call that depreciation. And we have a special entry you'll have to memorize, and every month you'll have to record depreciation on, on the books of that company. And in this case, they just told you depreciation is $40 a month. So when we go to record depreciation, we debit depreciation expense. That would be the debit. You're just going to have to memorize this entry. And you would indent, and we record what's called an accumulated depreciation. And then we put a, stat, a slash, I mean, a hyphen after it, and we put what it's for, office equipment, building, vehicles, whatever. Again, I do want to remind you that this accumulated depreciation account really is what is called a contra account. It's an off offset account. The depreciation account, expense account, of course, goes on your income statement because it has that magic word expense in there. But the accumulated depreciation office equipment account, if we were adding it to our trial balance here, as if you look in your book and you see the financial statements, the accumulated depreciation account will come right after the office equipment. When we do our financial statements, when we go to plant property and equipment, we would show office equipment at $5,000. Of course, there's a dollar sign in front of it because it's the first number. But notice what we put right under it. Less accumulated depreciation office equipment, $40. We draw a line underneath to show we're going to subtract it, and then we show the net amount over here to the right. The more depreciation we record, the more this accumulated depreciation account will grow, the more this number will grow towards $5,000. It cannot exceed the, the cost of the asset. But what we're really saying then is, is that when we show this number, this is how much is left of the original cost of the asset that we have not yet depreciated out. This value here, the 4960 your book calls the book value because that's the value we're carrying it for on the books. It doesn't mean that's how much the asset's worth. It has nothing to do with the fair market value of the asset. It simply says out of the original cost, that's how much we have not yet depreciated. So again, this is the presentation for it. It's called accumulated depreciation because that's exactly what it's going to do every time we credit this account. We're going to accumulate it in here, and it will grow and grow and grow to this 5000 So anytime we have plant property and equipment, we will always be recording depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. All right? Next entry we have, that would be an adjustment. The only other adjustment we would have at this point would be unearned revenue. Unearned revenue is money, as you remember from last chapter, that we collected in advance, and we are going to have to provide some sort of service and goods before we can earn it. So we right now have it as a liability. As we earn it, we will yank it out. If we come down here to this, to this last chart that I have down here, you'll see again that I have the unearned revenue set up with $1,200. All 
right, that represents the revenue that is um, due to us, okay, but we have not yet earned. So as we earn it, we will debit it out. Now let's say we're producing six units for a company of, of, of some sort of product and that each unit's $200. So you could see the 600, the six units times $200 is 1200 bucks. At the end of the month, if I gave you this trial balance and showed you a credit in here at 12 and said you've produced four, I mean two of those units, you'd go, well, if I produce two and there are 200 a unit, I have now earned $400. So you would have to remove $400 from here. That's the purpose of this entry. We would debit unearned revenue, $400. That would surely remove $400 from here. And now we, we indent and we record the service revenue. And now we have it in the proper period. And by doing that, as you can see, we had $1,200 in the service revenue. We credit, we debited out $400, and we do have that credit balance of eight. And we did record, again, the other thing that's down here is if you look on the trial balance above, which we're not going to pan back up to, but you'll see that we already had 10000 in service revenue and we've just recorded an additional 400 Okay? Again, coming back up now to our trial balance. Again, the purpose of adjusting entries is to go through a number of balances that we do have at the end of every month and to refine them, to adjust them to exactly what they should be at the end of the month. How all of the adjusting entries work and how they change these, the process of that, other than coming up with the journal entries below, will be in our next video that we will um, go through. Again, every company needs to have their trial balance adjusted at the end of the period. The purpose of the adjusting entries is to put the revenues and expenses in the period they actually belong and make sure that they are not in the incorrect. That's all that we have for today, um, and I will see you next time.